Welcome back guys. So I've been on a mission to design storage solutions for our workshops or our garages. So one of the things about our workbenches that I do not like is the wasted space around the aprons. So in this video, I'll be teaching you how to transform your normal workbench into this. Let's get started. And as always, I will be teaching you step by step on how to build this. But if you are a plans in the hand type of person, head over to my Etsy shop. I'll throw a link in the description. So we're going to start by cutting the parts that we need for the sides of the box. This can either be a two inch, let's say if you're wanting to store smaller hand tools, or it could be three inch, which will be perfect for drills and drivers. And for these sides, I'll be using a half of an inch plywood. So once we have our sides ripped down, Let's go ahead and cut these the length. Again, you can either make a two inch box, which would be perfect for like mounting a magnet and putting screwdrivers or chisels, things like that. And the three inch is really great for larger hand tools. For this video, I'll be making a storage compartment with a three inch side. But keep in mind that every measurement that I'm about to give you, it will be the exact same if you're choosing to build the two inch box. So now with our box sides ripped down, let's go ahead and cut these the length. So for this box, we'll be needing two different size boards. For the front and the back, we'll be using a 20 inch board. And for the sides, we'll be using a 15 and a half inch board we'll need two of each one of these and the reason why i chose 20 inches is the width most bar magnets are 18 inches long so if you'd like to put a bar magnet in the bottom of any of these you can so the parts cut our 20 inch boards will go in the front and the back and the 15 and a half inch boards they will go on the inside and to assemble this that's all that i'm going to be using is wood glue and brad nails if you'd like to put screws in this you can but i really don't think that it's needed so I'm going to be throwing on my PPE, which is the new RZM3, the most comfortable mask I've ever worn, and my axle hearing protection. I'll be throwing links with a discount code in the description, so make sure to check that out. Next, we'll be needing our bottom. It should be right around 16 and a half by 20, depending on whether your material is a full half of an inch or not. If not, then we'll just be cutting to fit. So I made this bottom out of a quarter of an inch plywood, and there's several different ways to install this. Personally, since this is going to be a hidden box, I'll just put some glue around my frame and then nail it directly to it. Now, if you wanted a cleaner look, you could actually take all of your box sides, cut it in a quarter of an inch groove, kind of like you would a dresser drawer, then assemble all of your sides around your bottom. You'd even take those side parts, cut a rabbit around the inside, and assemble it that way. If you choose to do either one of those styles, keep in mind that the dimensions that I just gave you are going to be a little bit different. All right, so now that we have our box assembled, let's go ahead and assemble our mount. So this is the part that will actually connect underneath of your your workbench and to your box and for this we'll be needing two boards that are 12 inches long by an inch and a half as well as a board that is 12 inches wide by 19 inches long but before we attach these boards we need to go ahead and drill some holes so anytime from this point on that i'm drilling holes they're going to be quarter of an inch holes because i'll be using a quarter of an inch bolts to assemble this so to start with i'm going to go ahead and lay out where i'm going to place these holes and to make things a little bit easier I'm just going to put a B on the back of these boards and don't put your B right where you need your line. So starting from the back, I'm going to measure one inch in and then we'll measure five eighths of an inch up from the bottom. So now let's go ahead and lay out our second hole. It's going to be seven and seven eighths from the back and then three quarters of an inch up from the bottom. All right, so we're ready to drill holes in both of these. So to drill these holes, I'm going to be using a quarter of an inch bit. I'm just going to use a piece of scrap wood here. And to start with, I'm just going to take my little spring punch and make a starting point for my drill bit. This will help to keep the drill bit from walking. I'll be drilling both of my boards at once. This can be done with a hand drill or if you're making several of these boxes and you have a drill press, use the drill press. But for this example, I'm going to be using a hand drill and Craig's drill guide. So before we actually go switching our boards around, this is the back. We have our little B here. This is five eighths of an inch from this edge. I'm going to draw an arrow here. So the arrow is pointing towards the 5 8 edge. This will help us in the next step. So now that we have our little arrows on the back of our boards, let's face those arrows up. So now with our arrows facing up, we're going to attach these two boards to the sides of this 19 inch board. And I'll be installing these two boards the same way that I did for the bottom. I'll just be using some wood glue and brad nails. And if you like these types of videos and you think that I have earned to subscribe, make sure to hit the little icon of my logo in the right hand corner. All right, so now that we have our mounting plate done, as well as our storage box, let's go ahead and make the moving parts for this build, the brackets. So the brackets are what will allow this to open and slide forward and then shift back in and lock. And we'll be making two different sets of brackets. Both of these are made out of an inch and three eighths material. And we'll be needing two of these that are six inches long, as well as two of these that are seven and three eighths inches long. So with two of our different size brackets cut, let's go ahead and drill some holes in these. And for each one of these brackets, the center of our hole will be a half of an inch in from each end and centered at 11 sixteenths of an inch in from the bottom. 
So once we have our quarter inch holes drilled in our brackets, let's go ahead and round these edges over. You can use a sander, you can use a jigsaw, whatever that you like. But this is gonna keep the sharp edge from hitting the top of the table whenever you open the compartment. And just a quick channel update. Our Patreon community has just broke 300 members, which is awesome. And our Discord channel is growing like crazy. So if you're interested in either one of those or just want to learn a little bit more about what they actually are, make sure to check those out. I'll throw a link in the description for both of those. And just a quick tip, if you're going to be making several of these, whenever you cut your first set of holes in any of these, make an extra part that you can use as a template for the rest. This will save you a ton of time and keep you from having to measure every single one. So with our brackets finished, we only have one more set of holes to drill, and that's going to be on the short side of our box. First hole that we're going to drill is on the back. It's going to be one inch in from the back and one inch down from the top. And then our second quarter of an inch hole will be six and a half inches from the back and one and a quarter inch down from the top. And now it's time to connect our brackets to our top support mount and our storage box. And to do this, we'll simply put our support on top of the storage box and place it towards the front. And then to install our back bracket, which is our smaller one, we're using an inch and a half hex head bolt with a washer on it. We'll place this into one end of our back bracket, place a second washer on our bolt, and then insert the bolt through the back hole. On the inside, we'll place a third washer and then a lock nut. At this point, we'll leave the lock nut loose to allow for adjustments. Then we'll need to attach the opposite end to the back of our support bracket using the same bolts and washers. Then we'll just repeat this step for the opposite side. Now you may notice that the support bracket will overhang the front of the box. The reason for this is during installation underneath of your workbench, you can actually put the bracket flush with the edge of your table apron and still allow the box to drop freely. So now with our two back brackets installed, let's go ahead and tighten up the lock nut. We can actually just fold this all the way back, but just keep in mind whenever you are tightening these down, we do not want to over tighten these. The parts should be able to move freely. And if you get one that's just a little too tight, just back the nut off a bit. So the next step is actually going to be to mount this underneath of your workbench. And that's going to be before we put the side brackets on. The reason for this is so that the storage compartment can hang down and we'll actually have room to get underneath of this to put our screws in. Once this is installed, we'll just install our last two brackets just like we did the back two. But just keep in mind from the underneath the front of your mount should be all the way against the inside of your apron. Let's go ahead and get this installed. Depending on how thick your apron is, you actually may have to move this whole thing back just a bit, like I do. I didn't take into account that I actually use reclaimed wood and it's a full two inches thick. Your standard two by four aprons are only gonna be an inch and a half. So because I'm hitting on the edge here, I'll just unscrew these mounts and just move it back a half of an inch. So the last step to all of this is securing your box up. You can get as fancy as like, RFID locks or the click snap lock, but, but since this is for my workshop and my workshop has its own locks, what I decided to use was just a half of an inch piece of dowel. So all I did was drill out a piece of scrap wood that I had and put it in the back. That way I would actually have some type of a little knob. And that's all there is to it. And you can put as many of these around your workbench as your workbench will fit. Not only is this a simple and cheap way to help organize your workspace, and it also creates extra storage by using those spaces that are pretty much useless. And if you like this idea, just wait until you see what I have coming up next. Till next time, we'll see ya.